Circle Z Soccer's YouTube channel. We are on Monday to Friday live at four o'clock. PLZ Soccer, of course, 24-7. You get all the breaking stories if you download the PLZ Soccer app in Google Play and in the App Store as well. And if you've got that app, you can watch the programme live on your phone and your tablet and, of course, your PC. Uh, so, now that we've got all the PR out of the way, Tam McManus is here alongside Ruffy and we'll be looking ahead to the weekend's Scottish Premiership ties. Uh, we'll also, in the next couple of minutes, bring you the draw for the third round of the Scottish Junior Cup um, because uh, that was conducted by Ruffy and myself only moments before we come on here. So, if you're waiting for your teams... Uh, and who you're going to face after next weekend's second round draw, then we have all the answers for you. Um, so with that in mind, that's only a few moments away, uh, which gives us uh, the chance, first of all, uh, Tam, to wish your mum a happy birthday. It's her birthday. Yeah, it is. Happy birthday, Jean. Uh, 65 today. Uh, I'm going up to my mum and dad's. Dad's roughy yeah. after this, yeah. Yeah. just Absolutely. in case you get any ideas. Yeah, she's 65. She's 65. Which is fantastic. And just out of curiosity, <laughs> does your mum play golf, tennis, <laughs> play balls, no. go out? She just goes to the bingo. Right, okay. But she's a big fan uh, of roughy. Which bingo? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Jean, happy 65. Yes. Uh, happy 65th to you. Thank you. Um, it's great, roughy. Must have had a terrible time bringing him up. Eh? He must have had a terrible time. Well, he's a terrible time getting me out. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't say it's a terrible time. That's what his after dinner circuit's right. about. That's what his whole story's about. His mum's um, just shame, to be perfectly honest with you, but it's still a good listen. Uh, anyway, happy birthday to you, Jean. Um, if you uh, want to post any point of view on our YouTube channel, on your favourite team, you can do. Thank you very much to so many of you have hit the subscribe button. Lots and lots of people just talking to us about um, their favourite team, certain things that have come up in the news surrounding Scottish football and beyond, to be perfectly honest with you. Alec MacDonald, who's from Edinburgh, says, well done to the 2,000 strong travelling heart support in Riga, who gave their team constant positive support and saw them come away with a, a good win uh, and their first Euro section win for a Scottish side this season, OK? Uh, no flares, no political banners, no UEFA fines, just supporting their team, getting on with the locals and enjoying a beer together, says Alec. OK, I think he's got his point yeah. across, Ruffy. Yeah, I think he has, and I would all like to think that's the way it should be. You know, when you're going to another country, you represent your own country, so you should be well behaved and uh, well done to the heart supporters and obviously celebrating the, their win the other night. Yeah, absolutely. And I have to say, well done to the Jambos as well. Uh, Gallant says hearts were worthy winners, and I think... Uh, I thought it could have been a lot more. Yeah, I thought they were the better side. Um, I think Craig Gordon made a couple of good saves early doors. I think that gave the team confidence. Lauren Shanklin, terrific penalty. I mean, that's you're not going to see a better penalty than that. You know, composure sticks it high in the top corner. And I think from then on, Hearts were comfortable. They'd further chances. You know, he put the game to bed. Two nothing was putting the game to bed. But eventually, you know, in, the, in a breakaway in the last couple of minutes, they got that two 0 which I think was was deserved over the piece. Yeah, absolutely. RFS hit the bar and then the heart started to settle down. Ruffy, Ginelli, Halliday, they had good chances. The penalty was a, a peach, as, as, mm. as Tam mentioned, you know, because um, where he placed it, Shanklin, uh, although I have to say, if you get into the dressing room with Lauren Shanklin, you'd have to say to him, you might have put the penalty in the top corner, but what about the sitter you missed with an open goal? Yeah, but that's what strikers are all about. <laughs> you know, if you ask, you ask Tom, I mean, every time we talk about Ali McCoy, people just remember the ones he missed. You know, but if he's counting up the ones he scored, the, I think it would be double the ones he's missed. But that's what strikers are there for. You know, they would like to think yeah, the ratio is they, they take their chances and. Uh, Certainly, as Tom said, the penalty was just magnificent. Yeah, great to get the win. The second goal coming in right deep into injury time. On the counter-attack as well, the ball eventually falling to Alan Forrest and he just uh, side-footed it into the back of the net. Cam, as you like, 2-0. Hearts fans, great night. That's what European trips are all about. Going and enjoy yourself, as Alec rightly pointed out in his email. Incidentally, a lot of people mentioned to us, and I might as well tell you, um, Alec sent us the message through the app, which allows you basically, if you download the uh, PLZ Soccer app, you can go in there and all you do is hit the menu button. And if you go to live football show, hit the red button, and up comes the show live. You can watch it on your phone. If you want to actually send us any messages, all you have to do is go into submissions. You can actually record yourself and it will drop in and we can look at your video of whatever you want to say. Or you can actually just send us comments or a selfie. 
um, very easy to use and it's got all the breaking news from across Scotland, England, the uh, European football and world football as well. So it's well worth it to keep you right up to date with it. It's got lots of great, unique video content too. So um, this is what Robbie Nielsen had to say after that Hearts win. Um, I think he was a happy man. Um, we knew coming here we were playing a very good team. They drew with Fiorentina last week, so we knew we had to be prepared. Let's go, not get too carried away. Fiorentina will be another tough game, uh, but I hope this gives the players the confidence that they can play and win games at this level. Uh, we'll be as prepared as we possibly can be for Motherwell, and they will be uh, also um, prepared for us because they're starting to get used to this now. Um, OK, uh, so... Should be a good game. We're going to talk about um, Motherwell against Hearts. I'm certainly looking forward to it. I'm going to go along. The one downside I can say for Hearts is Craig Halkett's got to be the unluckiest footballer going at the moment. He, you know, comes <coughs> on yet another injury on crutches. Now we're just waiting for how long he's going to be out. Yeah, well, I hope it's not the same injury, you know, because sometimes you take a chance as a player. You, you've been out for so long and you, you think you're 100% and you go, oh, well, I'm just going to take a chance on this. You know, and obviously if it is the same injury, it's a bit of a blow because he's going to be out again. And you can see, you know, that him coming into the side is what they've been missing in the last six or seven games, a leader at the back. So it's going to have to reshuffle the pack and uh, we'll have to wait and see how many players come through the travel and in the game and everything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Lynn says, uh, Peter, I was only joking, we don't need iPhone instructions, we know how to work the app. So there you are. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot's guide there. Yeah, no, honestly, well, you never know. Even Ruffy knows how to use it. Oh, absolutely. Oh, no, no, that thing. helped me. Did that help that you? That helped me, yeah. Well, you could use a video on it, Ruffy, and you can actually watch no. it. Yeah, no, I actually used it the other day there. I, I woke up uh, far too early oh. uh, the other day, thanks to a, a pheasant that was out in the garden. Right, you know, okay. Woke me up, so, so I passed an hour. Everybody yeah. else has got a pigeon, no, he's no. got a pheasant. No, no, it just shows you the, the, no, clock, the, uh, the golden the clatter. <laughs> Tom, Tom, it's, just, it's just another bird story. <laughs> so, <laughs> I've heard them all. No, so, I don't really need My point is, I passed my time for an hour. Looking at all the news Stories. that you had posted. Yeah, it was absolutely. Um, okay, uh, some <laughs> some people, as, as Tam says, up in East Kilbride, a few crows <laughs> and maybe a robin if it's a special day. But up in Ruffy's area, it's a pheasant just walking past in the garden. Fantastic <laughs> stuff. Uh, okay, uh, good luck to all the Junior Cup sides because earlier, just before we started, um, with uh, Alec McDowell, the CEO of the Scottish Junior Football Association, we conducted the draw for the Junior Cup and I can tell you right now um, we will put up uh, in full the video draw on the YouTube site and we will also uh, over and above that uh, put up the graphic of all the draw for you too but it's Kirk and Tillich, Rob Roy or Dundee North End versus Arthurley or Luger Boswell Thistle uh, Stonywood, Park Vale or Bells Hill Athletic versus Maryhill or New Mains United uh, Craig Mark Bur Burtonians uh, <coughs> versus Glasgow Perthshire or Kilburnie Ladeside Rossvale or Auchinleck Talbot will play Darville or Glentar uh, Bankery St Ternan um, or Gart Cairn uh, versus Livingston United or Scone Thistle Cumnock Juniors or Ashfield versus Forest Thistle or Thornywood United Peters Hill or Irvin Meadow versus Carnoustie Panmuir or West Calder United Tayport or Ardeer Thistle versus Greenock Juniors or Rutherglen Glen Cairn, uh, Dundee East Craigie or Brody Athletic versus Ellen United or Bathgate Thistle, uh, Rothy Rovers or Glen Afton United versus Dalry Thistle or Stonyburn, Aberdeen East End or Sunnybank versus Newmarket <coughs> United or Leitham, uh, St Anthony's or Blantyre Victoria versus Troon or Irvine Victoria or Fraserburgh United. There's still a few ties to go in that one. Uh, are Broth Victoria or Colsaith Rangers versus Harrowford United or Dundee Downfield? Stonehaven or Coulter versus Lockie United or St Rocks? Wishaw or Mabel Juniors versus Larkhall Thistle or Benburb? And Montrose Rosalie or Shots Bonacord? versus <coughs> Beath Juniors or Hermes. And the reason for that, Ruffy, is next weekend, the second round ties will be played and then everybody knows what's coming in the third round. Yeah, I think it's always good uh, to know if you if you win your tie, what's what's lying ahead. And uh, now that you've read it out and we've had a time to look at it, as Tam's eyes popped out his head, there is a tie there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying in against Ross Vale, or I think it's Glen Tanner. 
you know, but the two favourites uh, for the cup uh, will be drawn against each other if they come through these two games. That's Auckland and like in Darvo, you know, two biggest sides in Ayrshire. So that will be, if it happens, you know, will be a fantastic tie to see. Yeah, absolutely. It, it does sound, obviously, um, with a lot of uh, teams who have still to play the second round, but they now know what's what's uh, coming in the uh, in the third round. So good luck to all the players and the teams in that tie. Um, OK, uh, it's on to the Scottish Premiership with lots to talk about, I have to tell you, um, because quite simply over the weekend, especially off the back of what's happened in Europe, uh, a lot of people want to discuss uh, the fallout from that. The first one is, I can tell you, Celtic will face UEFA disciplinary action uh, after <coughs> fans displayed disrespectful banners about the royal family. Uh, Rangers will not be punished for playing the national anthem at Ibrox. Um, Europe's governing body has opened proceedings after uh, Celtic's Champions League draw with Shakhtar Donetsk on Wednesday and will decide on the matter in <coughs> due course. So, um, with that in mind, um, obviously Celtic are away to St Mirren on Sunday um, and Ange Postecoglou has actually stated um, that he reckons the, the fans will be respectful for the minutes applause. We've always... Uh... You know, as I said before the game, we abide by the protocols. We wore black armbands on Wednesday night. I think there's a minute's applause. We'll abide by whatever obligations we have and, and responsibilities we have as a football club. We'll do that in a respectful manner. Um, we want our supporters to do the same. I'm not going to speak on behalf of anyone else's supporters. Um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll look after our own club and, and, uh, and our own supporters. Well, Ange Postacoglu has come out and made the comment on it um, and reckons that the Celtic fans will be respectful. It's a minute's applause, Tam. I hope um, that... I, I have no doubt in my mind the majority will be respectful, but there's an element that you just... They're, they're just a loose cannon. Yeah, um, listen, it's a game that's getting beamed out by Sky, you know, all over Britain and the world, and we hope that the majority can drown out the minority because there's no doubt there'll be people <coughs> going there to, to boo and and hiss and whatever at the, at the minute's applause, you're hoping that the majority can assure them and, they, and, and, it's, and it's respectful. And that's what we're all hoping for. Whether we get that or not it remains to be seen. But uh, I, hope it's, I hope it's respected in the manner it should be. Yeah, absolutely. And I always like to you know, counter that by saying, Ruffy, that you know, whatever platform um, you're using, wherever you are, this is a democracy, you know, there are times when if you want to voice your displeasure at something, you're free to do so. Um, it's everybody's, um, you know, viewpoint on the passing of Queen Elizabeth II. Um, uh, some people think will show respect. Some people want to um, obviously air their displeasure at the royal family or whatever. That's their right to do that. Uh, I don't think we're knocking it on this show. What I think is... Uh, the, the point that's got Celtic in trouble is common decency. The banner was distasteful. I thought it tarnished the club's name again. Yeah, it did. You know, and you, we, we, we keep sitting here, and I'm sure the hierarchy at Celtic will be sitting as well, going, how, how, how many times do we have to apologise, you know, for uh, some of our supporters? You know, and the weekend, as Tam said, will be on the television. I, I would think if you're going to protest, as you say, feel free but do it outside the ground you know don't do it in front of the cameras and let the whole uh, the nation see and bring bad publicity to your club you know i think this is an ideal time i know we say oh you can't search everybody there's too many going in i think in this instance there's maybe what four or five thousand maybe celtic supporters i think the the security and the police should be monitoring everybody that's coming through that gate we don't want to see these kind of banners you know, that are getting thrown out there. So for the best of the Celtic Football Club, I think they should be more and more, you know, aware of who's going into that game and what they're taking in with them. Yeah, um, OK. It's one of those things that I always um, I like to highlight is it's everybody's right to express um, their viewpoint on things, but Celtic are in trouble because of the manner of the viewpoint, which mm. was um, derogatory. Yeah, the banner was, listen, the banner's poor. I mean, as I said, it's gone all over Europe. Um, I don't think there's, I don't think there was any need for it. There'll be a section of supporters or Celtic supporters that liked the banner, and there'll be a certain section of Celtic supporters that didn't and thought it was distasteful. So I think they'll get punished. I think they'll get fined again by UEFA, or it might even be maybe partially closing, you know, a section of the support at the home game, which punishes the club. So 
Ruffy's <laughs> right. I think the, the hierarchy and the board at Celtic will be pulling their hair out, you know, keeping apologising, keep getting fined for a section of Celtic support. OK, we're going to talk about St Mirren Celtic um, a little later on in the show. Let's cut to the chase of the games on the Saturday that we're going to look forward to. Here's the Premiership fixtures in full over Saturday and Sunday. If you're going to games, Hibs against Aberdeen. Um, I might take the wee journey through to the capital. No surprise there, Tammy. Mm -hmm. um, and see Hibs, see how they're faring against the Dons. Livingston against Kilmarnock, it's Rangers against Dundee United and St Johnston Ross County. Uh, on the Sunday at 12 noon, the kickoff St Mirren against Celtic and then Mother will take on Hearts, I think I'll be at Fir Park on the Sunday because that's what happens, Ruffy. Um, if you actually follow football and follow the teams and see them actually playing, it gives you a greater chance to comment on how they play. Yeah, yeah and not relying on the highlights. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Just thought I'd try fire that, <laughs> fire that dig uh, and see if you decided well, to play. Uh, if you go through the capital, I think you'll get a bonus. I think you'll get a really, really good game. You yeah, know, I think both teams, particularly Hibs, need a win. They need to get the support back on board. They need to get what is it, sixteen, seventeen thousand back in there if they're winning games. And it's going to be a tough one against Aberdeen. Uh, I think it'll be very, very close. But uh, I think Kibbs might just manage this one. Yeah, uh, well, it's an interesting one because, quite simply, um, you know, I don't know about you, Tam, but driving in Edinburgh at the moment is oh. an absolute nightmare. I mean, until they get that tram line down to Leith, mm. you cannot get to Easter Road unless you go, you know... You need to go, four, the, bi you need to go the bypass. Oh, you it. need to go 14 different roads to get into it. Yeah, you go to Herm it's easy to get to Hermiston Gate, and then once you get through Edinburgh, it's a nightmare. There's roadworks everywhere, you know, yep. the, the, the Edinburgh Council, you need to get a finger out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, listen, is is Gio Vanny Van Brunkhorst under pressure? Does he need to does he need to win this game against Dundee United in style? No, I don't think he's under pressure. He just needs to win the game. Uh, if he was to lose the game, I think that would be different. Uh, I think a lot of people will let their, their feelings felt, but I don't imagine that's going to happen. They're getting possibly of all the teams in the league uh, the right team at the right time. You know, I know things can change in football. But I think uh, the Rangers players will be upped by the support that their manager has given them and I think the support will be as well. And This team, Dundee United, are just shedding goals for fun and I think it will be the same on the weekend. Yeah, um, yeah they're, not, they're not great, um, to be perfectly honest with you, Dundee United. I, I think the Rangers fans will look at the performance against <coughs> Napoli and think, OK, they're a better team. Um, they may well have won with 11 against 11, even even if Sands hadn't been sent off, Tam. But all the Rangers fans demand is if you're going to go down, go down fighting and putting the effort in. They didn't see it against Ajax, certainly didn't see it against Celtic. And, you know, they're suddenly in a situation where they've lost 11 goals and scored none. Yeah, I think they're just looking for a bit of fight from the team, you're right. I think they went down with a whimper, you know, against Celtic <clears> and Ajax. And even though they lost 3-0 in Napoli, I think the, the score lines flattered Napoli, I think that up until they send it off in the penalty, the Rangers were well in it, probably the better side, so they'll be looking for a, a better performance and they'll be looking for, to, for Rangers to score a few goals, you know, I think three games without a goal for Rangers, I don't know if I, when was the last time that happened, you know, they've always scored goals, uh, so they'll be looking to go and put a good performance in, uh, win 3 or 4 nothing, and you know, ease a little bit of pressure on the, on the manager. Uh, and if the pressure is there, it's there over and above that, towards the board, we've already had Dave King, uh, you know, the biggest shareholder at the club, uh, talking about he wants more transparency, he wants to know exactly what's going on with the signings, uh, why there wasn't more money available for Giovanni Van Bronckhorst. Even Giovanni Van Bronckhorst is coming under a fair bit of criticism, not only for Ross Wilson's signings, but the fact that the signings that are there with him Mm -hmm. haven't actually been able to really push to get in the team. Um, you know, the manager says summer signings have to earn their place after limited game time so far this season. Yeah, I think it depends who, who, you're, who you're signing in and who, who you identify. I, I, two or three of the players weren't playing for their teams. Like the big boy Davis wasn't getting a game, you know, so they're coming. And we've seen it before, players coming to particularly Celtic as well, and they don't get a game for a month or two and there must be a settling in time and getting to know the style of play that they're playing. But it is a bit alarming that none of them were in the team the other night and I think that's what the supporters are, are just hanging on in, you know, and, and noticing, you know, and I said it to you the other day there, I, I was, I don't know if alarm was a bit, when it was 2 nothing the other night there, Ibrox was emptied, you know, there was, there was fans leaving at 2 nothing, you know, and it just shows you the difference 
cross the road at Parkhead where they get beat quite comfortably with Real Madrid and the whole stadium's full after 90 minutes. They're all applauding their team for the effort and everything. So I think a lot of the fans are disappointed. They're not used to getting beat, put it that way. You yeah. know, they're, 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 a, they're a, a team that wins nearly every week. So you've got to accept the the disappointment when it's there. You know, if you were a supporter at another team, you would, you'd be getting used to getting beat, but they're not. Yeah. You know, and that's that's the sign, the disappointment. But they really need to start winning games. I don't think it matters. You know when. <coughs> I I don't think it matters when when the supporters decide to leave. That doesn't bother me. I think what matters is if they're turning up in great numbers at the start and you're not producing over the course of the main crux of the game and it's not going according to plan because you're not playing the way. They want to see, they want to see that improvement. They're five points behind Celtic now. I mean, I've heard some pundits suggesting that if they lose to Dundee United or slip up again out with the, the you know, the old firm games, then this, this league could be over. Yeah, I think Rangers have got to be perfect now up until the, the next old firm game. I think they can't afford to drop any points. Because what, all the way to January 2nd? Yeah I, think they've got, yeah, I think they've got to win every game because I think Celtic win every game. Yeah. I really do. I think Celtic are so strong at the minute. They have strength and depth. I just don't think other teams are going to get tested. As Ruffy said earlier, Hearts, Aberdeen, Hibs, maybe away from home, maybe cause a few problems, but I just think Celtic will, will probably win every game. And it's up to Rangers to stay in, stay in the coattails. I think if Rangers go seven, ten points behind, the league's done. I don't see Celtic, you know, I don't see Celt uh, Rangers clawing that back. So they've got off to a poor start, Rangers, Celt uh, Celtic off to a perfect start. And that's just increasing the pressure, I think, on the manager to win every game from now to January. Yeah. Do you share that view, Ruffy? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think we, we saw last year the, the Rangers Celtic games are really, really important. And obviously, if you're getting into a game and you're five behind, it just puts added pressure on that particular game. Rangers are fortunate, they've got it at home, you know, so, but they have to go into that game with confidence. And the only way they're going to get the confidence is if they go into it on a back of a lot of wins. Yeah, um, OK, they're coming up against a, a Dundee United side that still haven't. Um, appointed a manager. Now, Tam, that's screaming out at me quite simply that they're giving Liam Fox as much time as possible to try and land the job and then spin it the way they want it to because, you know, the Dundee United job should be a, a, a really sought after job. Is it a poison chalice? Yeah, I don't think it's a poison chalice. I think that um, the expectations at Dundee United are, are high, uh, which they should be. They're a big club in Scottish football. Um, Jack Ross wasn't given a, a, enough time, uh, for, in my opinion. They've paid him off. They've paid him off. Now, have they got the money to go and buy, go and get another top coach in with a good pedigree and give him another budget? I think that Liam Fox is there. He knows the club, knows the players. He's a cheap option, and I think you're right. I think they'll give him every opportunity uh, to do well and get the job. But you know, going to Rangers, going to Ibrox is. If he can, if Dunedin can go and play well and keep it respectable and maybe sneak a draw then I think they'll give them it instantly. But uh, if they go there and they get battered, then I think Dunn United will be looking down another, another route. Yeah, two wins in nine, Ruffy, from Dundee <coughs> United. Uh, and after Rangers, I think Rangers are free-headed Ibrox for them. But after that, they've got St John's and Aberdeen, Ross County, Kilmarnock, St Mirren and Motherwell. These are all oh, games. Yeah. This is a run of games where people would be saying, mm. OK, y y this is your second season back mm. in the top flight. You should be looking to, uh, taking, to be taking a fair few points there. No, I've said this on numerous occasions. Every manager at every football club in his office has got a chart up on the wall of, of all the games that are on the fixture list and, and he'll definitely be earmarking all these games that you've just said there and this is, this is the time when they've got to start winning games and, and these are the teams that they've got to start winning against. Yeah, OK. Um, what have you gone for, uh, Tam? I, I usually have it all up there. Um, I've got Rangers to win comfortably 2 nothing. I've got Rangers to win 4 nothing. Four nothing. Yeah, I think I've got Celtic win four nothing as well. I think the Rangers. Oh, we haven't asked you about Celtic. Oh, right. Sam, sorry. Will you? I think the I think the Rangers <laughs> and Celtic against the United St. Mirren's Commandlux. I just I I'd just go for three, four, five, nil every week. Yeah. Yep. Um, just to keep yourself away from the bottom of the predictor. <laughs> no, I, don't. I just think the Celtic Rangers are miles ahead, miles ahead of the rest. Ruffy. Yeah, well, in between the both of you, I've went for three nothing. Um, for Rangers, yeah. okay, uh, fine. Uh, we like to read out as many messages as possible, and, and on a, a topic uh, as uh, you know, I think one that so many people want to pass comment on with regards to minutes applause, minutes silence. We try and uh, read out the sensible approach on this, and read out the points of view of you. Um, 
but more often than not, we will ban people who basically become abusive or the language is choice, to say the least. Um, if we are in the minority who want to highlight decency, then so be it on this programme. We try and talk football. We'll offer you opinions on uh, emerging issues and certainly issues of this nature, which has been dominating football right across the UK. Um, so, but if you can put it across in a respectful manner, we'll try and read out some of your messages. Um, the source says, Peter, you like to use the word democracy in a democracy, which he believes doesn't exist anymore. All people have the right to protest, not just the ones who uh, cry your sins. Um, well, I agree with you on all people have the right to protest. All people have the right to protest, but do it in the right manner, Ruffy. Um, mm -hmm. The banner wasn't in the right manner. That's what we're saying. No, you've got to think of the bigger picture. You know, you've got to think of the club that you're representing. And uh, I'm sure a lot of the Celtic supporters would be disgusted by the seeing it. That uh, that's all we're talking about now. We're, we're not talking about the game. You know, we're talking about a banner. You know, and that deflects away from the performance that the team put in away from home. And uh, it just deludes the, the score and what they did. Yeah, absolutely. Um, OK, um, listen, we read out uh, as many points as possible. Um, but uh, I know Marlon's just said respectful on this chat. There are some people who on the news feed clearly haven't got a modicum of decency in them and the language is choice, but we try our best. Um, but it is a football show. And, and if, um, if you think, Tam, I'm going to spend, you know, hours and hours policing people who are just morons. It's just not the show for them, is it? Yeah, you just it's not the show for them, Tom. We need to get that T-shirt printed. <laughs> this is not the He's show not for you. He's not said it for ages, is it? I haven't said it for ages because sometimes you do get exasperated. I mean, some people say people are easily offended. They're not. People just want to see. If you're going to... I'm all for it. I, I don't have an opinion uh, to voice on here or whether, I, you know, um, people are pro the royal family, against it. There are so many other issues you know, politically that people are exasperated by, um, but policing people who can't conduct themselves in the proper manner, you know, I've got better things to do with my time. We try and ban as many of them as possible, um, and we try and read out points of view which are valid um, in this democracy, whether it exists or not. Um, so Hibs against Aberdeen. Um, Lee Johnson hopes Ryan Porteous will sign a new contract. Tam, I have my doubts. I think, uh, I think he'll be off -ski. I don't think he'll sign a new deal. I think his eyes are fixed on England. I think that he'll be looking to try and get a move away from Hibs. Um, championship? Yeah, I think Championship. I don't think he's Premiership quality, but I think Championship in England. I think he's capable of going down there and, and doing well and maybe taking the next step up. So I don't see him. I think the Hibs have offered him. I've been trying to get him tied down on another contract for a while now, but I don't think that's going to happen. I think that he'll try and let his contract run down and, and go, go on a free. Ruffy? Yeah, I think he I think he has to play a lot better than what we know he can do. You know, obviously he's just got brought into the, the Scotland squad, which will give him a wee lift and give the club a lift as well. But uh, I've seen him playing better. Uh, and if he gets back to where he was, there'd be no hesitation in an English club coming and getting him. So it's up to him himself. Yeah, OK, I think he'll, I think he'll go down south as well. I share that view, Tam. Um, Hibs, one win in the last five. Uh, the last time out, they did get a win against Kelly, albeit by the solitary goal. Dunbe <laughs> Aberdeen unbeaten in the last four. And I'm I'm not going to proclaim that the, the Dons are, are back and this is the right move until I see, uh, you know, a sustained run from them. I'm the same. You know, I'm not convinced yet at all. I mean, I know you're saying uh, four wins. I can't off the top of my head remember who the four wins were against. But they've not taken a scalp yet. They've not taken yeah. a, a big team. So it's a big, big game. If they were to go to Hibs, and beat Hibs and beat Hibs comfortably, then you would say that they're up there to challenge Hearts for that third place. Yeah, I'm not saying it's four wins, Tom. I'm just saying them four. quite simply they're unbeaten yeah. in four. Um, it's whether, uh, well, have you got your list there? No, Did I'm you just do any research no, at all? You've got, it. You've, got <laughs> you've got the pad there. He's unbelievable, yeah. isn't he? I'm just um, training you find it out. Well, they know. beat Annan, uh, they drew oh, with well. Ross County. Oh, well. oh calm, yourself. <laughs> calm yourself. They defeated St Johnson and Livingston. Yeah. So that's your unbeaten in four. No, I'm not convinced with that. No. Yeah. Are you, Tom? <laughs> I think that's a decent run. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think that Aberdeen will be. I, I, I fancy them to be good this season. I think the signings I've made have gave them a bit of freshness. Yeah. Um, I think Miofsky up front. You know, he's replaced Ramirez. I think he's got goals in him. Johnny Hayes playing very well. Uh, Clarkson. 
Uh, they signed a lad for Benfica, the striker as well. So I, I, th I think they'll be good this season, Aberdeen. And this is a big test for them to go to Easter Road, where I don't think they've got a particularly great record. Uh, to go down to, to Edinburgh and get a result, I think would, would show that Aberdeen are the real deal this season. They're going to be up there challenging for third, but Hibs will think the same. I think that's going to be... That's got all the makings a good game. I think that'll be the game of the weekend. And hopefully there's goals in it. And hopefully Hibs coming out on top. Yeah, I think we've just got to treat uh, Tam's opinion on Aberdeen with contempt. Yeah. What is, he, what is he? You know, he, he rattled out yeah. the same jargon last year as well. We've just got to dismiss him, haven't we? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out who it is. He's pal the way up there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, running a pals at Aberdeen. Yeah, you've you got, you got somebody in the background. Yeah. No, 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 no. no. Just think they'll be good this season. Stephen Glass, unfortunately, yeah. didn't work out for him. No. Yeah. Um, I've got Aberdeen to win two one. Let's see if he says Hibs. <laughs> After talking up Aberdeen there, yeah. I've went Hibs to win two one as well. Yeah, I've gone Aberdeen to win two one. Oh, have you? Yeah. Hibs two I think one. it'll be a good game, but I think no, I think Hibs will win two one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We all these good have Aberdeen. You got Hibs we all these, we all these good Aberdeen I, players. I, I think Hibs will beat them. Yeah, I think Aberdeen have will be you good. Been this with Hibs this season? Not really, but I think. Oh. Okay, so there's no logic. I think to it. <clears throat> okay, um, I'm going to read out this one. Um, I'll, I'll read out things because sometimes along the way, Ruffy knows me better than anybody, although Tam's getting to know us. Um, Jumbo says, Peter's rattled because his silence has been called out on Napoli players being threatened. Uh, can't shut up about the banners. Um, we're not going to ban you, Jumbo. I mean, you put your point across. Um, I'll never... <laughs> <laughs> with with seven sisters and two brothers, Ruffy, <laughs> it's going to take something to rattle me on a program or anything else, and I'm not easily offended. I am the least, you know, I'm the last person, you know, that it takes to actually somebody a left hook that that will be offended. But there are some people out there mm -hmm. who are snowflakes. Yeah, yeah, you have to look at what we're talking about. Whatever yeah. what we're talking about is just about to be fined. So it's wrong. Yeah, you know, it's wrong in in the eyes. Uh, of UEFA, so we're, we're just discussing it, and if, if they've been found guilty, then they're guilty. Yeah, um, we'll wait and see how it all pans out, but uh, Jumbo, keep firing away. Um, we're all thick-skinned, uh, to be perfectly yeah. honest with you. That is an absolute stonewall certainty. Uh, although sometimes I think I should adopt Tam's attitude to it all, which is throw a grenade on Twitter and then run away and hide for a day. <laughs> Until uh, until it's all fallen out. Always available on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You I love that, don't you? You love. I stumbled on one. I yeah. Stumbled on one. Someday. One of Tom's tweets. One. The, yeah, I can't remember what it was. Now we'll come to me back in a wee minute. Yeah, was it was it. Rangers getting two penalties. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We saw that one as well. By the way, yeah, we did. We did see that. Um, did that get you much flack? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, there is a certain way to use Twitter, um, and. <laughs> not not the way you use it, I have to tell you, <laughs> but nevertheless, um, thanks to so many people who are posting their comments on it. Um, Hibs against Aberdeen, two, have you got 2-1? Two, 2-1 one? Two, one Hibs. 2-1 Hibs, okay. Uh, I'll go for the Dons to do something in this match. Livingston against Kilmarnock, um, it was a win for Livy over Hearts last time out, and Kelly narrowly lost to... Um, Hibernian, although they've managed two wins out of the last three. Uh, where, where's your money going in this one, Ruffy? Levy. Uh, I, I think both of them obviously playing that stupid Astro tough stuff. So that levels that out a wee bit. Uh, but I, th I like Levy at home. I think there are no individuals in the team. They just all beast in together. And they, they when they get ahead, you know, it's very, very difficult to clock back. So I'm going to go with them at home and I think I've went 2-1 yeah let me start to the season is just exactly how they finished they're that mid-table picking up the points maybe blowing your coupon from now yeah, every now and then Tam they are they're, they're, they're one you avoid the coupon I think they're, they're capable of an upset um, at home they're very strong you know they're difficult to beat they've got a way of playing as Ruffy says there's no individual stars you know, the team's a, the team's a star you know yeah. they'll, they'll dig in in the collective unit so I think Kamal will find it really tough there. I've went for Livingston to win, I, win as well. Yeah, I've got it 1 1, Ruffy. I can't separate them because I think, you know, although nobody likes uh, playing on it, it's one win in the last four for Livy. Yeah, but they're still <coughs> hard to beat, you know, and, uh, you know, anybody that goes down there, that's the first thing the manager says. You know, if there's a team who all battle for each other and you know if you're going to win, you really you really hope your team is, is in top for them. So. I still, I'm still not convinced with Kilmarnock. Yeah, OK, St Johnson, Ross County. Um, I've got the Saints to win uh, this one, I think, by a solitary goal against Ross County. Well, I stopped my neck out at the beginning and I've went for Ross County to be up there. You have, but, you uh, have. 
they're trying my patience. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and my patience has burst, so I've went for St. John's. <laughs> yeah. They won 2-1. Two, one. Yeah. Um, the only thing I was going to say about it is... Ross County have got a run of games coming up where I think we're going to get a real sense of whether Malky's team have got the same kind of attitude and, and fight as last season because County have got Hibs, Livy, United, Kelly over the next month. Mm. Now that is going to be the, the making of them, what they can get out of those games. I think that Ross County are going to miss Charles Regan Cook. I think they're going to miss him massively. I think that when I mean, you look at the goals he scored, I don't think they've got somebody like that in their team this year. And he got them a lot of points, a lot of wins last year. Uh, I've went for St Johnson to win that game. Jamie Murphy, player I've always liked, you know, struggled with injuries, but when he's fit and on form, he's one of the best players in the league outside Celtic Rangers. I really believe that. He's got great ability. And Nicky Clark up front has gave them a wee bit of freshness. They've been crying out for a goal scorer, St Johnson, for a number of years now. And I think they might have got one. And I think he'll score goals for St Johnson. So I've went for St Johnson to win that one nothing. Yeah, Hugh Scott says 2-1 to St Johnson for me too, Peter. Um, there's lots of people who we want to mention. Obviously, Tommy Adams um, has just said it started belting down with rain in Thailand. Uh, Tommy watches us every day. Um, there's lots of people are supporting yeah. us, uh, Ruffy, regularly on the feed, not only Vietnam and America, New Zealand and Australia, but they're hitting the subscribe button as well. Yeah, well, obviously, if Tommy invites us to Thailand, I would hope we'd be indoors. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, absolutely. Taking same, in the scenes. Yeah, same here. Um, <laughs> Rafi, you need help, son. <laughs> table um, tennis. Yeah, yes. exactly. St. <laughs> table tennis, yeah. St. Mirren against Celtic on the Sunday. Right, we've already discussed all the stuff off the field. I personally have looked at Celtic and I think, you know, he's got, he's got a way to go. He wants to build this side He's got options on the bench. He's got options in every position. They are playing some wonderful football. If I'm going to nitpick, Tam, it's it's that, you know, people talk about levels and just taking their chances. These next two games against Leipzig are going to be massive for them, but they're creating chances. If only they could convert them, they should have won comfortably against Shakhtar Donetsk. I thought they were really impressive, albeit it was a wee 15-minute spell for Shakhtar. No, I thought Celtic played really well. I thought they <coughs> totally deserved to win the game. I thought they dominated it for long periods. But you're right, at that level, Champions League level, you're not going to get five, six, seven chances that you do against St Merlin and Dundee United. You're going to be going to get two or three and you've got to take them. It was the same against Real Madrid. You've got to be clinical and you've got to score when you're on top because you'll get punished at the other end you know, by, by quality teams. But they go into this game and I think if you're a manager of a St Merlin or a Dundee United or whatever, you're, you're, this is a game you're dreading. Yeah. Or Celtic at home, you're dreading this. You're thinking, just come out of this unscathed. You know, I, I don't give St Mirren any chance at all winning the game. Uh, and if Celtic are back to their ruthless self that they showed at Tannadice, then it could be another long afternoon for St Mirren. Uh, I've went for Celtic to win 4-0. I just think that Celtic, the now, the strength and depth they've got, you know, the competition for places, the drive in the team, I think they'll go and win comfortably 4-0. Yeah, I like what you're saying um, with regards to to the to the way they play. I mean, if you're a St Mirren fan, I mean, you know it's like Ruffy. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter what level you've played football. Five asides, eleven asides, or whatever. I always thought I was a great player if nobody actually closed me down. <laughs> <laughs> See if you're a St Mirren yes. player, you're on a nightmare because you, you don't even get a chance to count to two. They'll be on you. No. They'll be on you. It, it, it must be an interesting one for the manager and players of clubs now. I mean, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I, I would hazard a guess that Celtic have nearly scored a goal in the first 10 minutes of every game that they've played in. You know, so if you're a manager in there, you've got to set your stall out and say, right, this is, we've got to stop this. We've got to make sure they don't score in the first 15, 20 minutes. So I don't know whether you just pack the defence for that 10, 15 minutes and yeah. hope... Pack can, the bus? Yeah, and then hope you can get through it. And then once the game settles down a wee bit, then you can maybe try and have a go. But like you are saying, you know, it's just a, a machine yeah. that just keeps coming forward and forward and forward. Domestically, I don't think... I, I, apart from... I mean, Rangers parked the bus in February. You know, and everybody was... I was gobsmacked the way they played in February against Ange Postecoglou side, and they just ran over the top of them. I think if you park the bus against them, they work ways, they work out ways to get in behind you. They're just incredible. Yeah, they? they are. They're playing well, but I think you've got to be you've got to be tight and defensive. If you're St. Man, you can't open up. I think you'll get you'll get an absolute doing if you open up. I think you've got to sit in two banks of four, yeah. you know, and the two strikers just sitting in as well when you've not got the ball and just try and plug the gaps. I think 
Stephen Robertson will have a game plan. You know, he try and maybe force Celtic to cross the ball into the box. Yeah. And rather than get, than playing through them, I think St. Mirren have obviously will fancy cross balls. You know, he go and head them away. Celtic are not the biggest in there, so I think that his his philosophy will be for Celtic and the crossing the ball, but because if Celtic can get the overlaps and the wee cutbacks and balls slid through, then they're going to have a field day. Yeah, um, OK. Um, even Ange Postecoglou, you know, looking at the way Celtic are performing at the moment, he still thinks they've got a bit to go to prove to people that they are worthy of playing in that Champions League. It's not easy, you know. You're playing against world-class players and world-class teams, but, you know, we're... we're, we're edging our way to to be that kind of team. And then the next layer is, well, then, you know, turn the opportunities into goals. And then, you know, from then you you turn that into victories at this level on a consistent basis. But that doesn't happen, in a, you know, with a snap of a finger or, you know. Here's a question for you, Ruffy and Tom. I want you to answer this. You know, the way the level Celtic are playing at and the way they're playing against top drawer players... You know, obviously they were they, they get undone with Real Madrid, who are the absolute top team in European football on the evidence of last season. But when you're playing against them and you're playing at that style, that intensity, as Tam mentioned, he can't see them losing until you know the big game coming up in January against Rangers. I mean, it doesn't. I, I can't see any team stopping them the way they play and 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 the level that they're playing at in Europe and what they're doing. Yeah, I think the more challenges they get in Europe and the more times they come back with a successful result, you know, they'll just grow and grow and grow in confidence. But for me, it's it's the squad that he's got together, you know, and he, he did it the other night there, and he does it at home as well, whether they're winning or not, 60 minutes, it, it could be four players off and four players on, because the tempo and the pace of the pay at, they play at for 60 minutes, it's going to take a lot out of some of the players, like Hatati. And, and he and and just decides, you know, after a, a limit, right, you've done a bit, you've done enough, off you come, and another three come on, and the three are the four that come on, just continue at the same pace. OK, one defeat, nine. Um, Saints, three wins out of the last four games. I think the last time uh, that uh, St Mirren managed to defeat Celtic, it was Celtic Park, it was 2-1 mm. in the Neil Lennon era. Um, Can you remember them beating Celtic 3 nothing at home as well? And that was Tony Mowbray's last game. Yeah, I think that was I think Long, that was four nothing. Was it four nothing? Yeah, I remember that. Um, like Moga's last last and, game. And they did manage a League Cup win back in twenty twenty one. They did manage a a, a League Cup three uh, two win over them at St Mirren Park, uh, Ruffy. But um, I, I'm not sure. I've got I've got Celtic to win three nothing. Yeah, I mean I'm thinking uh, St Mirren will defend and defend in numbers. They'll they'll, they'll try and come out of it at least not as scathed as what they could be, like a four or a five. So I think I've went two nothing Celtic. Yeah. With loads of chances but two goals. Four for you? Four for me, yeah. Wow. Okay. Um and the last match we're going to talk about, I'll read out a couple of messages that have come in. Um and Pat says, Do the panel think Geo will be sacked um if before Christmas if Rangers get a hammering um, off Liverpool or drop points in the league. I think this is the, this seems to be the the real driving uh, force at the moment. Second is nowhere in Glasgow, as you know. That's the that's the thing that every old firm player has mentioned. You know, second is nowhere, and if the other team is doing really well and you're not, it, it's magnified. Yeah, but you'd, you're looking at the Rangers. You know, three bad games. You know, then the final of the Europa Cup. You know, the teams they've beat in the road in Europe, away from home, and then you lose three games. And, and I think it's just the disappointment of losing three games in a row, which doesn't happen to the Rangers supporters. And I just think they're struggling to get their head round, you know, that's happened. But they have to be realistic and look at the three teams that's beaten them, you know, and take it, OK, uh, we just move on to the next game. And as we spoke to earlier, they're fortunate enough they've got D Dundee United. Now, if Dundee United were to go and win that game, then you've got some questions to answer. Yeah. Um, Ruffy, I'm just going to say something to you. Hearts, uh, Rangers, um, and then I'm looking and I'm saying to myself, Hearts, Rangers, Livingston, um, and then as I look down, Hearts, Rangers, Livingston, and oof, nobody else took... I mean, there's three de three defeats last season in the league for Celtic. Mm -hmm. So you're looking and at... And they all came at the, the very start, probably, yeah. when they were... And Rangers, defe in. Rangers defeated them in the Cup. But you're looking at the league. They lost to Hearts early on, and people are looking at it and saying, OK, and 
Postacog was just in the door. Um, they hadn't had any wins in the in the three, you know, Michelin as well. But I'm looking and saying to myself, okay, but the evidence of progression, Tam, in the games, they lost to Rangers at Ibrox in August. And then I'm looking, they lost to Livingston at Livingston in September. And then after that, the only defeat all the way through to winning that title um, was... I mean, it, I mean, it was Rangers um, in the in the in the Scottish Cup. After that, they just were relentless. They've not lost a league game since last September, Livingston. I mean, that, that's that's it. And I think Celtic are better this time around. Yep. So, so the pressure is intense on Giovanni Van Bronck because he's got to get Rangers firing, as you say, all the way to at least January. Yeah, I, I don't think that, that Van Bronck has to be judged so much on the Champions League. I think Rangers landed in a very very hard group. Um, you know, if you can be competitive, maybe pick up a point and maybe a win, then I think that'll be fine. It's the domestic, you know, you can't you can't afford to fall seven to ten points behind Celtic because the league's done and he's he's up against it already, you know, they've dropped five points. So I think that you'll be judged on the on the domestic scene in the, in the league and the bread and butter. The Champions League's are, you know, for Celtic and Rangers, they'll struggle to be competitive. I think for Rangers, for Van Bronckhurst, he would probably have been better dropping into the Europa League. I know they've won PS, beat PSV and, and got all that money, but for Bank, Van Bronckers as a manager, him winning games in the Europa League would have been better than getting pumped in the Champions League. Yeah. And it's, they're on the same budget. It's not as if when they got that 30 million against PSV, they went out and spent it. You know, he's still <laughs> got the same budget and the same players, and they're, they're up several classes in terms of the, the teams they're playing against. So I think for Gio, He's just got to win games, game after game, and be be consistent in the league. Yeah, I am. Um, I mean, I've obviously at the start of the season, you can only look at what uh, is in front of you, the signings that the teams make, and then you make your call. I called St. Johnson to get relegated, and I'm looking at the way <laughs> the way he started to get players back from injury. And he's, as Tom mentioned, he signed Nicky Clark. I'm looking at Celtic. I think they're even better um, than they were last season. I think I've tipped them to win the league, and I, I can't see us changing our minds, Ruffy, on this one. No, I, I just think if you look at the way that Celtic play and you look at the firepower, I mean, you're looking at some teams and they may have one or two goal scorers. I think Celtic have got five or six. Five or six players that will be in the top goal scoring at the end of the season. Yeah, just before, um, uh, Motherwell Hearts to talk about. Fir Park um, side have got one defeat in the last five. Uh, they should have won against Dundee United last time out. They absolutely uh, battered them. Um, and the jam tarts off that good result. This is a tough one to call, Tom. What have you gone for? I think for Mallow. I think that um, I think that game during the week last night will take a lot out of, take a lot out of Hearts. The travelling, you know, the pace of the game. I thought it was a, it was a fast pace of the game, and I think there'll be a few tired legs in there. He's struggling for players now. He's there's you know Halkett's back down. You know he's he's done his hamstring again, and I don't think he's got a lot of options. So I think Mallow will fit rested. As you said, unlucky against Dundee United, should have won the game. I think Hammy's in there and they're starting to just to change the style a wee bit. Louis Moult coming in. So Kevin Van Veen scoring goals. I fancy Mullo. I actually fancy them strongly eh, to beat Hearts. What have you got? I've went for 2-1 to Mullo. I've got it 1-1, Ruffy. Um, the Jambos, I, I think Tam makes a good point, which is where I might end up with egg in my face. But the Jambos, I've got Mullo, then Rangers, then Fiorentina. Yeah, and I think uh, the, the, managers, the Hearts managers are ready said that it's, it's a new experience playing in Europe for him and for his players and they have to take it on board, there'll be things they have to do that they haven't had to done before because they've got two games in a week. So it'll be interesting to see how many players come through unscathed in that game, you know, and what his team selection is, but uh, I think the latter part of that game might be the hard one for him, you know, if the players get a wee bit tired, so, but I still think they're good enough to get a draw and I've went for one each. OK, um, here's the quiz, by the way. I should have done it at the top of the programme, but um, obviously the Junior Cup was taking over my mind. How many club career goals has Ronaldo scored? Do you know the answer to this one, Tom? I think it's 699. Uh, Ruffy, what do you think? About 520. 520, oh, he's gone through a barn patch. Mm -hmm. 520. <laughs> I'm sure his penalty last night was 699 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, OK, we'll give you the answer in about maybe uh, 10 minutes before we go off air. But there's your quiz question for you. Um, always like to just test you for it. Um, of course, the reason why um, Bonzo uh, is so assured in his answer is because he reads my script. I did not read your script, Peter. <laughs> he does. I did not like, read it. So I watched the Miami game last okay, night and he told me that this goal was... 
a number. And it's the exact number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Anyway, apart from anything else, um, we've given you our predictions. You can give us your predictions as well. Don't forget, Tam and Ruffy are with uh, Kerry Pollock and they do a preview on our YouTube channel on the Saturday. Um, always good to get uh, a, a different face, Ruffy, and you sit down with Kerry and she does a preview for the Saturday for the games as well yeah. on our YouTube channel. Yeah, and it started off just an ordinary prediction, to but now she's beginning to test us. Yeah. She's thrown wee, wee added Curve bits balls in. in. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. We'll have yeah. to be sharp. You know, that's why we do a lot of research well, before we come in. I was just about to say, um, knowing knowing <laughs> you two, Dun Dunderheads, as I do. <laughs> Ruffy does not do any <laughs> No, research. absolutely not, Tom. It's oh, a stone wall certainty. Yeah. Knowledge. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I think uh, the Scottish Premiership should be interesting this weekend. I think I've got two games to look forward to, Ruffy. What about yourself and the old uh, Jags? Yes, we certainly have. We've, uh, I, I thought, I, mean, I hate saying things like this, but I thought it was a wee bit bonus the game being off last week. It would have been a, quite a good game between Air United and ourselves, and obviously, whichever team won that, you know, would have went top of the league, yeah. which would have been important. And we, Air United are flying high, so we've missed that one. Uh, we now have a home game, and they have an away game. So I think it's a wee bit, we've still got to win your games. Are they still your biggest test, or do you think it's going to be Dundee or Inverness? Dundee. Dundee, Dundee for you? Yeah. I think United might spring a wee surprise. Yeah, and I this think United yeah. will be in the uh, top four. You know, yep, I, think I, think they're, I think they're good. I think they've signed good players and they've yeah. got a wee bit of everything about them. I, I, I worked with Lee Bullen at Falkirk, tremendous guy, first and foremost, but a very good coach as well. So I'd like uh, one of my old clubs, so I'd like to see United doing well, to be honest, and, and maybe winning that league. And yeah. indeed. And indeed. One of your old yeah. clubs. Yeah. Queen yeah. of the South, no? Oh. Falkirk. Nearly signed for Thistle. I was in trial with Thistle. Did you? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Jackie McNamara. Yeah, we've yeah. got standards there. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Jackie knew a footballer um, when he saw one. And uh, he just said, <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they offered me a contract, and it was, it was yeah. uh, the wages were very low. Yeah, well, so it's as you know, I went and met for more money at United. It's not all about money, Tom. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good point, actually. Um, <laughs> these days we get a bit of money off, quit in the off, bank. I know, exactly. <laughs> 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 Aye, and then some. You tell me what uh, bank it is. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway um, Tonight, if Southampton defeat Aston Villa at home, is, is Stephen Gerrard under pressure? Oh, well, again, you know, it's uh, it's the fans down there that uh, dictate what's going to happen and how the owners uh, retaliate, you know, and whether, they, whether they've got a good response with their manager or not. But sometimes we see it down there and sometimes there's decisions get made and we're all shaking our head. But it's certainly not on a good run, so it obviously he needs wins. Yeah. Great result against Man City. Last result at home, one each, and uh, I think they'll beat Southampton. Yeah. Fancy Villa. Strongly? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We never spoke about it yesterday. What about Haaland's goal to He's win volley. for Man City? It was absolutely outrageous. It was, it, it must have been it, it was Ibrahimovic, um, because that's the type of goal he scores <laughs> uh, throughout his career. See, they were calculating per minutes and per goals, just chances. Not that he's in, he's in course to score 100 goals this season. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and on the, on the way he's going well, well, the way he's going at the moment, uh, the reason why I think he's easily going to hit the target that you set, Tom, I don't think you're going to end up with egg in your face. I said to you, he would break every record in English football. Yeah, well, I think I think he could easily score 40, not because he's an out-and-out, -out, I mean, he's an out-and-out -out powerhouse, physical, scores with his left, scores with his right, and, and can obviously out-jump at more than a few people. But I think the one element of it that really is going to be beneficial to him it's the first time, and I'm not being disrespectful to Borussia Dortmund, it's the first time he's got Bernardo Silva and De Bruyne feeding him, and those two are geniuses. Foden, Grealish, you know, he's got, he's got so much, he's got so much you know, quality around about him, and yeah. he's going to score, oh, he's got a bad load. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Nottingham Forest, Fulham. Uh, here are the fixtures, actually, you can have a look and see which game you're going to watch in the English Premier League. Uh, Villa, Southampton, Nottingham Forest against Fulham, Wolves, Man City, it's Brighton, Crystal Palace, Newcastle against Bournemouth, Tottenham, Leicester, Brentford against Arsenal, uh, Manchester United against uh, Leeds, uh, Everton against West Brom. I wonder if Tom Rogic is going to get there for that one. Um, and obviously Chelsea, Liverpool uh, with Brighton against Crystal Palace and also Man United Leeds. Those games uh, are going to be played at a later date because they've been postponed due to, of course, um, 
the strain, I think, at this moment on the police force regarding uh, the funeral coming up on Wednesday, uh, Monday of Queen Elizabeth. So um, you can pick your games uh, down south as well. Um, the answer to our uh, quiz, Ronaldo, 699 club career goals, Ruffy, which is absolutely unbelievable. If he scores again mm -hmm. in uh, the next couple of weeks, t to score 700 goals yeah. is phenomenal, isn't it? It's amazing in the older... Guys sit here talking about Pelly's, what, a thousand? And we counted one, bounce games. Two hundred. One thousand. He counted bounce games. I had about five hundred. Yeah. Yeah, the count bounce I, think games. I think I think the other thing about it, which which a lot of people don't know, and it's all down to research, Ruffy. Um, the Brazilian government wouldn't let Pelly leave the country as far as going sign for a European club. He was like a national treasure, and as well as playing for Santos and playing for Brazil. They actually went out and played in exhibition, games, exhibition yeah. games against clubs. Now, he would have counted them. I think Romario was miffed at it, but he still played the exhibition games and scored goals. The legitimacy of 1,200 goals is you know, something that a lot of people will question, but there's no, there's no questioning his ability. He was phenomenal. He certainly was, but you can't take it away from Ronaldo. I think he's excited us for, what, 10 years, something like that, you know, and he's, he's won... Cups, he's won leagues, he's won for his country, he's won competitions single-handedly. Yeah. You know, that, that's a measure that, 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 me. That's the one thing that they'll, they'll always argue Ronaldo was better than Messi because he's he won something with Portugal, won the Euros with Portugal, and Messi's no one in Argentina. Well, with all due respect, I think... Big, you, big cup. Messi's got a... Messi's got a, a he's just a wonderful player um, and has done things which are unbelievable. But I think once Ronaldo retires, people will look and say, wait a minute, this guy has won leagues you know, in every club yep. that he's played for. In different countries. In different countries. He's won, himself. he's won the Champions League. He's won the Ballon d'Or. I think, you know, easily, it's Ronaldo, Messi, where are they in the top five? For me, Pele, Maradona, um, and then you've got Ronaldo, Messi, Cruyff. You know, that yep. that's my top five. Yeah, okay, where are you? No, I can't argue with any of them, man. Yeah? I can't put anybody in front of them. Ronaldo, You'd, Ronaldo, the Brazilian. Yes, it's a great shout as top well. Top five, but, but he picked up injuries. Who's who's out of your top five if he's in? So I would go for Pele, Maradona, Ronaldo, Ronaldo, Messi, and no Cruyff. No Cruyff. Wow. Okay. I didn't see Cruyff. I know he was a mm. good player. Good player. <laughs> You need to have a word with him, don't you? <laughs> Honestly, I need to. I would give you Cruyff's book, um, but it involves reading. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, <laughs> Tom, Tom is great to have him here and his mum's. Uh, what did you get your mum for her 65th oh, birthday? I've got her, I'm not going to tell you on the show, obviously, because she's tuning in right now, but yeah, I've right. got her a couple of gifts and they'll take her for a dinner. Half decent gifts. Yes, got her some good stuff good. and they'll take yeah. her for a dinner. As you said. Brilliant, absolutely. Fantastic. Fantastic. Are you a mummy's boy or are you a dad's boy? Mummy's. Yep, okay, there you are, absolutely fantastic. That's, uh, you were a dad's boy, weren't you, Ruffy? No, mum's. We are mum's no, boy. Mom, yeah. That's why we're all on this programme, to be honest with you. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, for those who <laughs> who want opinion, you've got it. Some of them don't like it. I really, at times, I'm reading the feed and I'm thinking to myself, you know, it's, <laughs> thank God, I don't live in the world of some in, in our feed. Apologies to... Quite a few who obviously read them and, and we try and ban people who can't conduct themselves properly, but the world is changing and, and some of us are looking on with dismay. It's a democracy, um, according to some. Uh, thank you very much for all your opinions um, on the football and thank you to uh, everyone who got involved in the Junior Cup draw. Uh, if you want the third round draw in full, you can see it on our YouTube channel when Ruffy and myself conducted it with Alec McDowell. And of course, you'll also be able to, across our social media, be able to access the third round draw. The second round matches take place next weekend and then everybody knows who they're going to play. So, simple as that. Um, and Bob White, I think, has just sneaked it in and I'm going to actually mention it. He says, my mum is going to Ibrox tomorrow. She's 79. Um, 79 and still going to the football. Bob, I hope your mum has a great day. Thank you to all of you. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We'd love you to join the football family, um, whoever you support. Thanks to Tam. Thanks to Ruffy. And from myself, Peter Martin, have a great weekend.